Greetings, fellow portal masters. Greetings, fellow portal masters. I am Crash Rouser, and it's once again time to crash guns with another top five video. Last week we talked about Giants, week four we did Spire's Adventure. We're on the theme of levels, if it isn't obvious, with the last, you know, six weeks talking about, well, last six weeks, this whole week's coming up talking about that. Um, one of the coolest things about talking about levels is there's so many of them, and there's so many games with so many different levels. So, you know what? We're not going to waste any time. And today, as I slightly walk to the side, we're going to talk about the top five best Swap Force levels, because, you know, that's the next game in the series. So, as always with my list, I always like to say that it is my personal opinion, but actually this list has a rule to it. Some of my lists already have rules like how I don't have certain Skyliners on it and things like that, but this time I actually have certain levels that are a part of this. I decided that the Glumshanks battle, the Fire Viper battle, and the Mesmerelda battle don't count as... I don't really feel like they're levels. They're just battles. You can just pop into them and do the battles. However, Motherly Mayhem and the Crowd Break Core were a part of this because those, I feel like, are actually the levels. Um, the Motherly Mayhem one's a little bit iffy, while the Cloud Break Core is actually a complete level, you gotta get from point A to point B type thing. That's what I consider as a level. With those ones, you just go in and you battle and that's it. I know you can dance around that, but in my opinion, these five levels I picked are better than those, so they wouldn't have been on the list anyways. But you can disagree in the comments below, and as always with any of my lists, as long as you're respectful of me, I will be respectful of your opinions, and everyone's respectful here on the channel. I think that's a really nice way to describe it. So, without further ado, as it just made a weird sound, we're going to hop right in to number five. Kicking off our list at number five is the Phantasm Forest. So one thing I really like about this level is the fact that it honors exploration. One of the things I mentioned on any of the previous videos or in general is how I like going from point A to point B, but with a lot of branching paths. Phantasm Forest has so much open area and it's so long that there's so much place, so many places to go to. It's the only level I dread when I'm recording my locks because that level is going to be his, uh, I have to basically speed run that level so I can save my face cam footage because my camera can only record about 30 minutes of video at a time. Uh, or a little over 30 minutes, and that level is almost 40 minutes long <laughs> if you decide to go out of the way for everything. So that's one of the things I really like about a level is that it's so long that you have so much fun and so much things to do. There's a lot of awesome enemies, plus you get that little mini chaos boss battle at the end. One of my favorite things about this level though, as I mentioned, is the exploration aspect. When you get to one certain area, there's usually two or three different paths you can take to get to the next spot or to go out of your way and find other things. And that's one thing I really like. The only flaw on this level is the flying segment where you've got to do three different, you know, where you shoot the uh, water cannons. That's a little bit whiffy, but I really like the final one where you have to go around and actually take down or take out the, um, the elemental, the big life, I think it's the life one. I forget the actual name of it, sorry. But that one there, I love that little battle where you gotta go take all those down. This level is fantastic. It's the one level where I feel like if I ever need to record footage for a SWAT Force level, this is the one I'm going to record it in. It's Phantasm Forest because it's got so much to it. You can literally get a bunch out of it. But yes, number five is the Phantasm Forest for those reasons alone. Number four is what I mentioned earlier. It's the Cloud Break Core. So in my opinion, the Chaos Boss Battles are kind of linear. They just I'm gonna be doing top six Chaos Boss Battles at one point. Don't worry about that. Top six, yeah, not top five. Um, I like this one because it brings something brand new. The first game you had that huge battle with the Hydra heads and all that, and eventually you take out Chaos. The Giants one where you take out his Archean. The third one is you take on Chaos in five different waves. Four different waves, sorry. You start off with his toes. He stomps down and you gotta take out all the evilized crystals off his toes. And then he tries to swallow you and he, you land in his mouth. And you gotta take out the enemies that he throws in his mouth and takes out, you gotta take out the things on his teeth. It goes to a battle inside his own brain, which uh, is a lot easier than it looks for some reason, especially if you have Magna Charge with big bunch of them off the edge. <laughs> and then you have that huge race to get to the end of the cannon to hit him with. It's so much fun. It's one of those boss battles that I don't feel like it's complicated. I don't feel like I'm gonna lose a hundred Skylanders in the battle. Like, trap teams, for example. But with this one, it was so much fun doing that. It's one level I actually love going back and playing. Especially when I get to, you know, a lock and I get to that battle, all I know is I'm going to have so much fun in that one. I'm not going to be stressed and be like, oh man, I might lose all my skies. I'm like, man, I'm going to have a blast. It's so much fun. 
So yeah, that is my number four on this list, the Crown Break Core. Absolutely love that battle so much and that whole level itself. It's very unique and very creative, especially in a game that was still early on in that series. Number three is the Rampant Ruins. So I mentioned that the Glumshank battle is one of my favorite battles, like mini boss battles that you do. The Rampant Ruins leading up to him is one of my favorite levels. I absolutely love that level because of the fact that no one expects the Stone Monkey. <laughs> the really cool thing about that one is there's this is another one that honors exploration. Um, I remember playing it the first time around. I remember seeing the little monkey that was on the top, that little pedestal. All the way up, I'm like, how in the world do I get up there and get that? And then a little bit later on, I was like, wait a minute. And I noticed the path, so I walked around and walked all the way back and went and got it. I'm like, okay, that's really cool. I really like the puzzle with the laser lights where you got to stop the thing at perfect timing to make it open the door. And the one where you have to get the stone monkey where you got to get it with that perfect square. I thought that's really cool. Introduced some really good enemies too, especially those spinny guys, which you can't do anything until you fight them, except when you have main charge, you pretty much do. Uh, and I love the fact that this one is a huge level with exploration. It leads to probably my favorite battle in the series. My dog just decides to run straight into the room in this shot. <laughs> but yes, regardless, um, I love this level so much just because it's so much fun with exploration and just going around and finding all the cool things involved with it. Absolutely love this. Absolutely love this level. This is one that leads to an amazing boss battle, and it's got to be one of my favorites because of that. So number three is the Rampant Ruins. I'm kind of distracted now because my dog is in here for some reason. <laughs> number two on the list is another level that leads into a boss battle. It's actually the Twisty Tunnels. Twisty Tunnels starts off very cool. You show up with Shark Finn and Flynn. You go down to the area. You fight a Fire Golem. I think I'm not mistaken, a Fire Golem right away. A bunch of Chompies and little uh, Greeble Trolls that are there. And then you drop down a hole, and that's where the level gets even better. There's so much little things in the level, little details that honor the exploration, just like I mentioned, that make this level so much fun. My favorite thing, though, about this level is the fact when you got to get inside and break those crystals. So you'll know that there's these crystals tracking the ancient terror squid, and you're like, how do you do that? Sharkfin realizes you can shrink right down crawl right in there and do that. I love that area. It looks so nice. It's so much fun when it comes to that. Getting from the one point to the next point, hopping around, getting up there, knocking it down, destroying that. Along with that, making all the way and fighting all the enemies that are in between there. It's an excellent place to grind and level up really quickly. I like the fact that the fire viper comes up and tries to throw you off your game at some point. If you remember my swap core lock, uh, that was the one level I got very scared and almost lost a Skylander in, so go back and watch that episode. It's a very good one. Um, you'll know it's the right one because I say fire viper, you have no friends at the beginning. <laughs> but yes, this level is so much fun. It's really great. My dog's running in with a toy now. <laughs> we'll play after. I got one more clip to film, okay? <laughs> but yes, speaking of fun, uh, this level is great for that and I enjoy it so much. Plus it leads to the fire viper battle, which is very fun and complicated, which that'll be in a future top five for sure. But yeah, number two is the twisty tunnels. And number one on my list, ignore the noise in the background, there's a dog playing underneath my feet right now, is Motleyville. So I talked about this one in my favorites video, my Crash's favorites, back in um, Crashmas. <laughs> I'm really distracted right now by this dog, I'm sorry. But Motleyville is great because it introduced two of my favorite characters in the whole franchise, Sharkfin and Varen von Schellschock. Baron von Schellschock, I said Varen, sorry. Baron von Schellschock. This is... <laughs> Can you not? This level is fantastic because it gives you little boss fights in between. Whiskers gets evil eyes, you have to fight Whiskers once, but then you don't actually beat him. You actually have to continue on and fight him. I know, just like that. So you go on, you finish, keep this. You finish it, you continue on the level, you fight it over and over. Eventually you get to another Whiskers battle, but along with that, there's the rail grinding along with you collect that. There's out of the way you should get from point A to point B. My favorite part of the entire level, besides for the Baron, Baron Von Shellshock final battle that you do with them, is the fact where you go up to the guy, I forget his name, and he's like, yeah, I think there's a key in my shed, just uh, don't touch anything. And you go in, and there's two possible emblems. You go in, you don't touch anything, you grab the key and come out. And he, and I think he says something like, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, good luck with Baron, or good thing like that, hey, you got the key, perfect. But the thing is, is if you destroy it, he goes, are you sure you didn't touch anything? I better go check. And he goes in, and you're like, uh-oh, and then you just got to get out of there, basically. Um, it's sad that he doesn't do anything about it. Like, you go inside, and he's just like, oh, you destroyed everything. What a jerk, or something like that. 
But I love that because it has two different outcomes. Because it feels like he's just like, don't touch anything. And you're like, oh, I'm going to destroy everything. And he's like, are you sure you didn't touch anything? You're like, oh god, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Versus the fact the second time you play it, you're like, what if I don't touch anything? What's it going to be? And he's just, you know, a nice guy about it. Um, the Bono Battle with Baron Von Shellshock is fantastic. It's actually one of my favorite little side boss battles. If you look at the battle with um, that stone golem in Spyro's Adventure versus this one, it's like this is what they did with the Spyro's Adventure one, but they did it better with Baron Von, uh, Von Shellshock. And I absolutely love that. It's such a great level to play. It's one of those levels that I feel like if you just want to play a random level just for fun, especially to feel get a feel for a Skyliner, this is a great level to do it. And Motleyville is definitely one of my favorite levels in the entire franchise, not just in this game. But as of right now, it is my number one best level in Swap Force. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry for my dog distracting. She's still at my feet playing with a toy. I'm definitely going to be playing with her after this one. Um, good thing I have a week before the next video. Are you you're ripping at the stuffing? Don't do that. She's ripping at the stuffing of the toy. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this one. Our top five best Swap Force levels. As always, in the comments below, let me know what your favorite Swap Force level is and let me know what your least favorite level is. I always like to see that because I may do a least favorite video in the future. I'm not going to say worst. I'm going to say least favorite levels. I think that's the nice way to do it. Right now, my dog really wants to play, so I'm going to have to finish this up. If you guys enjoyed, let me know. Leave a like in the comment below. Next week, I'm going to be talking about Track Team. This is my new little mini series. Oh, excuse me. I'm doing of all the levels. And if you're new to the channel, welcome, I'm Crash the Skylands. I do Skylander videos, if it isn't obvious. And I try to upload three times a week, so uh, go check that out. She really wants to play, so I'm going to cut this off. So, but as always, I bid you farewell.